Hi to you, this is Pete Howard from PosterCentral.com and thanks for coming on by today's entry into the video blog of uh, my website. And I have four posters today from the Pacific Ballroom in San Diego to show you, all involving some really cool legends. We start here with Sam Cooke at the Pacific Ballroom. And this is, um, there we go, let me get that straight top to bottom here and move it on up. This is from 1960. 6-0. Great picture of Sam. Very handsome performer, that's for sure. He's definitely one of the founders of soul music, no question about it. He had, Cook had 29 top 40 pop hits from 1957 to 64, and this is right in the middle of 1960. How cool is that? Very simple poster design by Colby Posters out of Los Angeles, and it's interesting, um, it's always fun. There's not much more to talk about except the song titles down there at the bottom. It's interesting because you Send Me was a number one hit in 1957, so yes, that's got to be on the poster. Chain Gang was number two hit from this summer, 1960. Sure, you bet. But Summertime? Why Summertime on there? I just couldn't figure that out. I assume it's the George Gershwin classic, but three years earlier he had released it on a single, and it was his worst performing 45 ever. Why in the world would they have stuck that on the poster? It would have made much more sense to have, like, Wonderful World on here, which had just been top 20 earlier this year. What a selling point. But summertime? Oh, there's sometimes just real hidden reasons behind these things that we just can't figure out all these decades later without anybody to ask, you know, that was involved. And uh, sort of an ironic date and a sad one for Sam Cooke. Notice this is Sunday night, December 11th. And exactly four years later, on December 11th, 1964, Mr. Cook was shot and killed mysteriously in a Los Angeles motel room, ending his career at the age of 33. So that's a sad and ironic date. Okay, sticking with our theme, though, of the Pacific Ballroom in San Diego, a great place to see shows, here's B.B. King from 1961. And actually, I'm going to jump right ahead and say it's not just B.B. It's B.B. King and the boss of the blues, Big Joe Turner. Um, this is, um, both of those guys are members of both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Blues Hall of Fame. So, I don't know why Turner was such an afterthought or such an add-on. Sure, he peaked in the 50s, but still, you know, come on. And this is a uh, Tillman poster out of Oakland, California, a so-called split fountain design. And it is trimmed on three sides. It's complete on the bottom, trimmed on the other three, which is a little unfortunate, but of course, white cardboard can be restored easier than colors and things like that if a picture were missing. Nice early photo of B.B. King. Love that photo. Interesting smattering of song titles. He was not charting any pop hits, just R&B at this point, so the song titles are sort of all over the place. In fact, um, You Upset Me, Baby was 1954, you know, seven years before this. Nice to have Blues Boy on there, though. See that? B.B. King Blues Boy? That's where the B.B. comes from, of course. It stands for Blues Boy, so it's nice that they were still including it at this point. And as I said, Joe Turner at the bottom, the boss of the blues, Mr. Shake, Rattle, and Roll, a legendary songwriter named Doc Pomus once said that rock and roll wouldn't have happened without Turner. Wow! And here he is buried at the bottom of a poster in 1961, but forever remembered for Shake, Rattle, and Roll. So that's really a, another cool Pacific Ballroom concert poster. So then we go from the boss of the blues, Joe Turner, to big boss man, Jimmy Reed. And, uh, yeah, what the heck, I'll say it. It's also on the boss's birthday. <laughs> that's right, September 23rd is Bruce Springsteen, the boss, his birthday. So that's, that's three bosses mixed in. I couldn't resist that one. Anyway, Jimmy Reed, boy, what an incredibly, incredibly influential electric blues musician. You, you, know, who, you, know, you know who he is. But, um, you know, everybody just covered him and re respects him and, and admired his music. Rolling Stones, Elvis. Elvis Presley took um, Big Boss Man top... Uh, Top 40 in 1967 as a single. Um, you know, Clapton, The Grateful Dead, Hendrix, Rod Stewart, Willie Nelson. Neil Young often plays Jimmy Reed music for the audience before his show starts. That's the kind of uh, respect he's accorded. So, um, But Reed, known for electric blues, not so much acoustic, and just really, I just love his sound myself. I think he's got a great voice and everything. This is um, the, po the timing in Jimmy Reed's career here in 1961 is so fantastic. Um, his last two singles, well, his current, his current single to chart the very week of the show was Bright Lights Big City, which a lot of you know from the Stones covering and so forth. And uh, I think on the BBC, I don't know if they released it. And his previous single was Big Boss Man, Out in the Spring. So two of Reed's better known crossover hits and records right at the time of the show. And I just love the, um, you know, the pink, the pink and black. It's just really sweet. And the dance at the top in Pacific Ballroom. Interestingly, no poster credit. So can't say who printed it. Doubt if it was Colby. They always put it on there. So that's our third Pacific Ballroom San Diego poster. And the fourth one is Miss Etta James. Wow, Etta James. 
Excuse me now, this is 62. We're moving into 62 for this one. She's a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Blues Hall of Fame, the Grammy Hall of Fame twice. And I'm just going to plug her for a second in case you think, uh, you know, the other two or the, the other three posters are bigger or something. Rolling Stone magazine once did an article on the 100 greatest singers of all time in all of contemporary music history. Etta James came in number 22 ahead of Elton John, Janis Joplin, Bruce Springsteen, Michael Jackson, and Bono. This babe had, and still has, pipes, although her health is ailing at the time of this video shoot. Just um, amazing. And this is 1962. Nice, nice uh, Tillman there with, um, you know, the tour blank style with the, the uh, exact date information printed at the top. Got some nice song titles on there. In, in this year, 62, she had three top ten R&B hits, including Something's Got a Hold on Me, which hit that spring, and is arguably, it's her co-signature song. Her other signature song is the very famous At Last, and luckily, At Last is on the poster as well. That, of course, being the, the hit record that Beyonce sang to President Barack Obama at his inauguration and everything, but just a classic song on its own. So, And this is sort of like Etta's peak just before she fell into serious drug trouble in the mid-1960s with heroin addiction and everything else. And uh, finally, the opening act, it's kind of funny to see, obviously, simply Etta James's support singers, the Jamesettes. <laughs> so, not too uh, dissimilar to Ray Charles' Ray Letts. These are the Jamesettes. So, um, anyway, just, you know, sort of rounding out the poster. It's basically an Etta James show, not a double bill. So, uh, printed, um, did I mention, by Tillman in Oakland. T-I-L-G-H-M-A-N, but the G-H is silent. So, Tillman Poster Printing Company, which I love. And the Pacific Ballroom in San Diego, which if you were there, you'd love too. It's just an amazing, uh, it, it was an amazing place for concerts to be seen. So, hope you enjoyed the presentation, the Pacific presentation. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.